One of the best things that one of Molly's doctors said to me, um, Dr. Mary Corhos, who was her um, transplant doc, is she said, Sarah, and I, right now, let me do the worrying for you. My job is to worry and to play out every worst case scenario and to plan for that. I promise that I will tell you when you need to worry. And you, you know, do you trust me enough to do that? And I, I did trust her um, because she had been so amazing and had just shown me in so many different ways, big and small, how much she was thinking about my child, how much she cared for my child, how much she saw my child as a child and our family. And, and so I did trust her. And I, that was probably the best gift that anybody could have given me because I really was able to focus on parenting and being Molly's mom and letting all my oncology knowledge go out the window. And, and there was a time when she said, I am worried and, and this is when you, you need to worry. She finished chemo uh, and then went into uh, transplant. And so um, Molly, uh, normal, I think usually when in, uh, in ALL, they, you know, there would be a look for a parent donor, a sibling donor. Um, we had done a lot of genetic testing at that point and nothing had been found, but there was still this fear that this just is, the chances of this happening randomly are so low, there must be something. And so we d had an unrelated donor um, and she r did a conditioning regimen for transplant that um, her transplant doc, who is a phenomenal doctor, was, was very upfront about the risks, but also very comforting in that she had a plan for like, if this comes, you know, this could happen and this is what we're gonna do. And for me, that was, uh, I knew that bad, you know, things could happen, but the fact that people were proactively thinking about them made a huge difference. And same thing with our palliative care team, that we set up an individual meeting and we went through, they went through kind of every, everything that could happen. I mean, p parents play out the worst case scenarios in our heads anyway, but to have someone play that out with me and then say, but this is, and this is what we will do in this situation X was, was I, I went into transplant, I, I should have been terrified, but I, and I was, but I was also kind of like, all right, we have a team that's got this. And like, that was such a gift to go into it with that because transplant's brutal. Uh, and actually most of the side effects they predicted for Molly, they thought she would be intubated because of the mouth sores, um, did not happen. Ones that were kind of typical Molly, lo much lower likelihood of happening did happen. And um, she got two different viruses that um, just decimated her. Um, and it had a complication from a procedure. And at that point, actually, things got pretty bad. Um, so these viruses, um, one of them especially developed a drug resistance, which usually it doesn't. Test takes two and a half weeks to come back. Um, and her levels started skyrocketing. And so um, we ended up back in the hospital about two weeks later, week and a half later, um, and right before her birthday. And the next day, um, because her transplant doc is, was just her biggest advocate we got on uh, Mayo's private plane um, and flew down to Cincinnati Children's um, for an experimental treatment. Um, and we did that again three weeks later and it worked. And she got a, a boost of cells for her donor.